So today's tutorial will be making a copper wire chair. So you can see here I've already made the aperture and uh, can't wait to show you how I made this. It was a really a lot of fun. <music> To begin with, I'm just showing what it would look like if I used a piece of flatware for a chair back. Of course, I'm not going to cut up this piece of flatware because it's my good kitchen flatware, but it would work for sure. So what I did was is I took the copper wire and I had a large dowel and I wrapped it around the dowel and that's how I made this little armature. And once again, here is the flux. So I'm just going to put flux in all of the joints before I go ahead and attempt to solder this. So this time round, um, you know, I said in the last video that I was using a 40 volt. Uh, um, it's actually, a, I was using a 30 watt soldering iron, which is really good for doing electronics, not so good for this purpose. So this soldering iron that I'm using today, I'm actually the one doing the soldering and it's a 60 watt um, soldering iron that I normally use for doing stained glass. And as you can see, it's so much easier because it heats up really, really well. But uh, I guess the bad part of it is it actually heats up the entire little chair. So after you're soldered each joint, you don't really want to touch anything on the chair until you let it cool down for a couple of minutes because, oh boy, she sure gets hot. So um, I'm just uh, looking at all of the joints and trying to line it up. And <clears throat> as you can see here, the... Um, front there um, it looks pretty good so I'm going to take off the tape so I can show you what the joint actually looks like so if it's done properly it should just flow right up the entire two pieces of metal and give you like a nice seal which I feel like we really accomplished here so I really wish that I had those helping hands so they're um See, see the joint, how it's soldered nicely? Now look at the other side here. Um, I didn't do such a good job of the other side. So I left my bloopers in so that you guys could see what happens when you make a mistake. So I haven't soldered that on the way I want it to be soldered on. So you can see here, I'm just like kind of taking the needle nose pliers and trying to straighten it out. And of course, it's not going to straighten because it's soldered and soldered well. So what happens is if you make an error like I did, so um, it's not soldered level the way I want it to be. Um, it's really, really super simple to correct your errors. You just simply look, I've taken the soldering iron and you just unsolder it. Simple as that. So you can keep on soldering it and soldering it and soldering it until you get it right. So it's really not as difficult as one might think. What I was trying to say earlier is those helping hands that have the alligator clips, they sure are a lot simpler to use than using uh, the masking tape the way I'm doing it. But, I mean, if you need to get the job done, you need to get it done. I've actually put those helping hands that I own away somewhere. <laughs> and I have no idea where I've put them. So, okay, so again, um, even though we already soldered that joint, we have to reapply flux. I can't stress to you how important flux is when you're doing any kind of soldering because it's just not going to stick to the metal if you don't put it on. And that's what gives the solder the nice flow. So I am just putting it on again and I don't think I do it quite right this time. Nope. 
So you can see here, I'm gonna go for attempt number three. <laughs> Third time is the charm. And uh, so you just keep on repositioning it until you get it exactly the way you want it to be. So I'm using the needle nose pliers to get it exactly the way I want it. And there we go. And we're just applying the solder and it does work this time around, which is nice. So, perfect. And that poof of smoke, that's just the flux burning off. So I've got the basic armature for the chair belt, and that's what it looks like. So if you wanted to do a chair that had armrests, you would just make those side pieces higher. So, and you don't have to do it shaped like a U the way I've done all my pieces. You could do them square, you could do them any shape you want. So the next chair I make, I'm doing a square one. <laughs> so you can see the little piece that I put in the center. Um, that's what I'm gonna use to kind of end the chair back. And I did these little curly Q pieces to put inside the back of the chair. I didn't end up using them, but I wanted to show them to you just so that you would have an idea of different things you could use for a chair back. Um, with that wire wicker furniture, they oftentimes use screen. So you could use some screen and you could uh, solder that on as well. So this is the piece that I do end up using. So it's just kind of a little curly Q piece that I made that uh, is fits in there quite tightly. So um, it's a little bit of a modern twist, but I kind of like it and I've soldered it on, and that is my completed chair. So pretty easy peasy. It is on the crude side, but as I say, this is my first attempt at doing a copper wire chair. So I think with practice, I would get a lot better with it. So I've got some uh, printer paper and I cut out a little seat so that's what it will look like once there's a seat put on it. So the seat will just be glued to the directly to the metal. So I'm going to take that piece of paper downstairs and I'm going to cut a little wooden seat. So I think everybody knows how to cut a piece of wood. So I don't feel it's necessary for me to take you downstairs and show you that. So here's the wood that I cut. Here's a little piece of terry cloth that I have, and uh, I'm just gonna glue the terry cloth directly onto the top of the chair seat, and that's just to give it a little bit of cushion. Now you could use uh, quilt batting, or you could use cotton batting, or um, you know you could use an extra piece of thick fleece, just something to make it a little bit poofier and look a lot nicer than just gluing the fabric directly onto the wood. After all, it has to look comfy because we don't want uh, our little dolls to get a sore bum when they sit down. <laughs> okay, so then I've got the fabric. It's turned right side down and I'm just kind of lining it up with the seat bottom. And I have to trim around the edge because it's just a little bit bigger than what I want it to be. So what I want is I want to have about a quarter inch seam line, a seam allowance all the way around the wooden piece. So you can see I'm just kind of trimming it and uh, um, and then I'm just making little little cuts on it so that it'll be easier to turn in. So whenever you're making miniatures, it's really important like when you're doing furniture to do this because otherwise you're going to have weird kind of wrinkles on the good side of the chair once it's done so this just makes it easier to wrap the fabric around the wood so now i'm going to take some of my tacky glue and i'm just going to run some glue around the edges and then i'm going to turn the fabric in and glue it down to the glue. So, so it's a little easier to do it with my scissors than it is to do with my fingers because it is so tiny. And don't worry about the corners. So if the corners kind of stick up a little bit, it's not a problem at all. You could just snip them off. So, 
and uh, I'm very generous with my tacky glue, I must say. <laughs> uh, it's funny. So, yeah, so I'm just turning this side on to the wood. That looks pretty good. See that little piece that's poking out there on the corner? Not a problem. Is we could just go in and trim that off and nobody's going to be the wiser. Nobody will even notice that that happened. So I've got a, gone around uh, three corners. I, I guess the important thing to note is when you're making seats like this, you just got to make sure that you're pulling the fabric fairly taut because uh, you don't want it to be all wrinkly on the other side. So... And I'm just using the scissors once again. It's a little easier to do it with the scissors than with my fingers. When I do things with my fingers with tacky glue, I end up getting glue all over the place. <laughs> so the corners are sticking up. You'll be able to notice it. See, I'm just going to take um, my scissors and voila, just trimming it off. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so, I mean, I really didn't have to, but I did cut uh, a piece of uh, black construction paper to put on the bottom of the chair. And the reason why I did that is because it's like if anybody picks up a piece of your furniture that you're, you've made, it gives it a nice finished look underneath. So, and it's, the, I guess that's the way they make real furniture too. If you turn your chairs upside down, there's always a piece of fabric or cardboard or something underneath of it. So I'm just gluing that down and it'll hide all the little jagged edges that I glued down and that should look good. But of course, I glued it on backwards. <laughs> Thank goodness that the glue is not dry. I have to turn it around and put it on correctly. Ah, much better. So, and I'm just pressing it down really good. There, I'm pretty pleased with the way that looks. Now, in hindsight, it would have been probably a little bit nicer had I lined up the fabric, like, perfectly, but i'm pretty pleased with it and it's a good color too it's like red and blue and it's got some green in it and a little bit of pink so it should go with almost anything so um, i went inside and took this little chair and scrubbed it with a scour brush and some dish soap and now i'm going to paint it so this rust-oleum high gloss paint is paint and primer all in one and uh, I'm using bright white, and that's the color that I've decided to use to do this little little chair. <laughs> you can see it's it's so tiny that even the pressure of the paint spray is knocking the poor thing over. Oh, there you go! I knocked it over twice. So I'm just going around, and I'm doing the other side. I think that looks good. Um, this Rust-Oleum paint is pretty good. I ended up only having to do one coat of paint on this chair, which I think is, is pretty good. So you can see my hand is in the way. <laughs> there you go. So I'm just going to let this dry and cure outside for a couple of hours. In the meantime, I wanted to show you guys my garden, which is just finely sprouting. So... There's my perennials against my garage. So um, don't have much for flowers yet, but at least some stuff is coming up. It's been so dry here. Um, we've had lots and lots of fires here in Alberta this summer. Um, we desperately, desperately need rain. So now the chair's dried for a couple of hours and I brought it inside and uh, I'm trying to sit the little chair seat onto it but of course you know it's hard to get it perfectly even when you're holding an ipad in one hand <laughs> so i'm just kind of demonstrating for you where the tacky glue is going to go in order to put the chair seat on so i've got it glued down and that's it that's my finished product 
I mean, it is crude, um, but it's my first hurrah at it, and uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, I would like to experiment with using some um, thinner gauge wire for doing ornaments, like, you know, little swirls and stuff, um, but uh, haven't gotten any of that yet. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me today. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and please tell your friends about my channel, and hit that like button for me. And have the best day ever, guys.